This program is brought to you by IG. Trade over 12,000 shares and ETFs, including major tech giants with extended hours on an award-winning platform. IG, where traders are made. All right, I know we, we covered it on the call because one of our viewers wanted uh, the stock covered yesterday. Um, uh, Henry Jennings from Marcus today and Andrew Weiland from TP, DP Wealth Advisory were pretty scathing about the SAX. Well, this morning, SAX. Uh, S- <laughs> did I say SAX? I, I got on my mind. It's certainly not sexy, that's for sure, or sexy. Uh, the ASX, uh, its shares fell this morning. We've got to cover it again. As the market operator indicated an increase in technology spending, its Achilles heel for so many years over FY 2025, uh, between 160 and $180 million. Look at that. Um, down 8.5% as we speak. The ASX announced increased spending was expected in the medium term before starting to ease after FY 2027. This elevated spending is said to be driven by ongoing technology investment, including software licensing, equipment ex- cost depreciation and amortisation. Uh, regarding growth rate guidance for FY25, set to be between 6 and 9%. And as we saw, shares slumping this morning. Uh, Daniel, this technology <laughs> issue with the ASX has just not gone away, has it? It has been a right royal stuff up. No, spot on, Koshi. And I guess that that's the reason why ugly stocks can always continue to get uglier. And I was actually looking at the valuation post the fall today. It's still trading on 16 times enterprise value to EBITDA, which is, you know, a pretty hof- a lofty multiple for the business. It's actually around its long-term averages anyway. So it goes to show that wow. any fall in valuation has been more than offset by any fall in forward earnings. So we actually haven't even seen much of a, a valuation decline at the moment. It's primarily been an earnings-driven decline. So, and obviously a business like ASX with very moderate top-line growth, when you have cost increases at such a large amount and ASX are big culprits of creative accounting. I mean, they tell you not to look at certain expense lines. They say they're one off. They happen every year, like you've mentioned. Um, capitalizing costs is, is a massive, massive thing for the ASX. So it's it's just a bit of a mess at the moment. And certainly, yeah, one we've steered clear of. Although, look, I'm a bit surprised by, I guess, the magnitude of the fall today because everyone knew ASX had a downgrade coming up. It was probably the worst kept secret, but uh, the the extent of the forward um, expense guidance was even above what uh, the, the bearish analysts had. So, yeah, it was pretty remarkable to see that they've downgraded by such an extent. Is that a reflection of just investor frustration, both at the big end of town, the big fund managers and retail investors, at the ASX saying, for God's sake, just get it right. Yeah, absolutely. And anyone who deals with the ASX directly, particularly in, you know, pricing for data and whatnot, like they're, they're just not very good people to deal with. I mean, a lot of the large data providers, to be fair, aren't. We, we deal with our fair share and find it very, very frustrating. But like you've mentioned, they keep putting up prices to customers. Customers are uh, upset. They've burnt um, a lot of people on the trading platform as well. And traders now are steering clear of the ASX for, for the RBA cash rate, the interest rate trading, because of what happened with the RBA a few years ago, you know, so firm on not putting up rates. And then, of course, leading to the largest trajectory of rate rises in, in decades. So there's just a lot of things going against ASX right now. It's not just management. It's people steering away from their platform on everything really aside other than ASX stock trading. So you look at um, the settlements of, of fixed income, like I've mentioned, that, that's been a big drawback as well. Yeah. Francesca, what do you reckon of the, the announcement today? And any well, interest in the ASX and investing? Well, what in I find surprising is the market found it surprising. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, they, they, they failed with that uh, blockchain investment that, oh, I don't know how long ago that was, yeah, that 12, was 18 months ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of those costs will be flowing through now still. Um, right. And, and when, you, when, you, when you have these capital, capital costs and you get nothing from it, the market's going to punish you pretty, yep. pretty, pretty harshly. Um, so not, not, all, not, a, not all that surprised by what's going on. I'm more surprised by the way the market regathered um, on the ASX after you know, that failed investment in, in yep. blockchain. So 
be interesting to see where they go with that technology. They, they you know, they've announced that you know they want to move to T plus one and uh, a number of other things as well. But um, you know, uh, a they're very slow at their their evolution, and b their success rate is not that great either. You know, yeah. there's not just blockchain. There's other things in the past. So. Um, yeah, look, I'm not a fan. Um, you know, we have an underweight on it. Um, at some point, though, it's going to look good value. But, but, but as Daniel mentioned, you know, it, it's on a fairly steep valuation at, at the moment, isn't that even the at this that, price. Isn't it funny that after all the stuff ups, it's at its historic valuation? Yeah, I think so a it lot, hasn't been punished below the historic no, valuation at all. I think a lot of that has to do with it being a virtual monopoly. Yes, yeah. there's 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 chiax in the marketplace now, but. Yeah, really, they're still, small, you know, yeah. they're small compared to what the ASX is. So I think, you know, the market probably places a little bit of extra value on it because yeah. of that. Um, but, you know, is it warranted? Um, you know, if they, I, I think it is warranted if they manage it better, but they're yeah. not managing it very well at the moment. So, and you've yeah. got the regulator breathing down their neck saying, if you yeah. can't get this platform right, well, then we have to think about whether you stay a monopoly Yes, for the, oh, 100%, 100%. Uh, for the financial but, 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 you know, uh, you know, upgrading their trading and settlement process. I mean, our, our chess system's pretty advanced compared to some in the world. Right. Um, and and really, do they want to be leaders as a, as a market that really is only right. small in r- r- relative to a lot of other markets around the world? So do we need to be a leader in you yeah. know, that that? That technology settlement yeah. process. I don't uh, think reliability. We, do. we need to be a leader. One hundred percent reliability. Innovation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not innovation. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, look, I, I yeah, would I sell it? Look, if I'm being a long term holder, I'm probably still sitting on profits. And really, they're getting punished today. And and, and look, there might be some more weakness in it. Um, it, it. You know, if I was looking to invest, I'd probably still wait. I think, right. I think there's more dust. To so settle. hold if you're in it. But hold if you're in it, but avoid otherwise it. avoid. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. That's. Uh, our stock of the day, ASX. This program was brought to you by IG, Australia's number one CFD provider. Trade over 17,000 markets with extended hours on key US shares and competitive spreads, all on an award-winning platform. IG, where traders are made.